Hey folks, welcome back to Crazy Gamer Models. I am the Crazy Gamer, and yes, I do models. How's it going? It is Yag Tiger Build again. Uh, there's so many parts, I don't know what part this is. It'll go up on a Saturday for Tiger, Tiger Saturdays. And here is where we're at. We have glued on this other side. It's setting. I glued it on just a little bit ago. No sense watching me clamp that up and fight with that again. You watch me do the other side. These are still currently loose in here while I um, get ready to put the next sections in and then they'll be secured in place. Now let's take a look at what we have for the instructions. Also, okay, also I have in here the four hydraulic cylinders, three, the four cylinders all cleaned up with their joints all cleaned up looking good. So all four of these are done, ready to install. Um, I'll have to install them off camera because if one's different, it's going to take me a while to figure that out. So we are on, we did step four, that was all of step four, now we are on step five. Sorry if the lights are... Uh, Washing that out. Let's try this here. No, that's probably better right there. All right, let's see if we can zoom in and take a look here. Okay, so we're going to build this front panel to slide in here, and then we're we're going to piece to it, slide that in, slide these uh, supports in. Once these are in and all aligned, we will glue down the. We will glue down these points here, square, and ready to go. And then we have a little bit of linkage up here for some control arms and the mounts for the transmission to go in the front. So that's what that section is for. And then on this section, we have assembly of the torsion bars. Once these are assembled, and all this is assembled it's going to be paint time and um i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna do all this in this video show this all ready to get ready to paint and then um, i'm gonna paint it and then when we come in for the next video uh that the next saturday it'll be painted and then we'll move on to the next step so i still have to do some more checking just to make sure but that's what um that's what it looks like because the torsion bars are going to go in and then yeah and then we, we we paint the inside and then we'll just paint pieces individually as we make them so that is what is going for this so I'm going to take a break oh wait nope sorry that was my bad not break yet we're going to look at the sprues we need we need the Q sprue which is our um suspension arms take a look at what these look like you know they're not bad they don't have too many um, mold seams on it there's your idler suspension a um, little bit of nice detail on them there'll be no problem to clean up I mean the nubs are pretty big but other than that no big deal and then there's two of those two of those sprues right there so One of each has been cut off to do to work on the wheels. But I have them set aside. And then now for the other part of that, we need the R sprue. And off of this sprue, we need R1, which is these pieces here. And that will go into the torsion arm, the suspension arm. These are the torsion bars here. And then here are the pieces for the wheel hubs. So the connection points don't look too bad. There's a little bit of a seam on the torsion bars, but a quick cleanup with the Jewelry N7 tool, and you won't see them if we put them together correctly and put the mold seams out of the, out of the way so they're not going to be seen. So that's the R sprue. Now we're going to take a look at a sprue I haven't opened yet. And we're going to go ahead and open it right now, and it is the F sprue. I didn't have a Ziploc bag large enough 
for some of these sprues. So, um, this sprue's getting open now. This bag's getting open now. So, this is the F sprue, and it is a King Tiger sprue. It is basically, you know, wow, this sprue is huge. It doesn't even stay on camera. Let me just give you a glimpse of how large this sprue is. Um, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, about 15 inches by about 10 inches. So it's a, it's a, it's a quite a large sprue. So the nice pieces on it. So nice cherry can detail. The, I don't know if you can see the words and letterings written in that jerry can, but it's very distinct. I mean, it has the ABA on it, 20 liters, 1941, wall wear mark. So it's a very nice detail. These caps here that do the torsion bar greasing, they look really good. They look like the actual caps that would go on a grease point. They do have a little bit of a line on top that I'll have to take off. But other than that, I'm surprised the jerry cap nozzles are not on this sprue. I see the handle parts, but not the nozzles. Not the one nozzle. Or pour spout, however you want to say it. It must be on a different sprue. Alright, so that's the F sprue, and we have one more sprue to look at. That we haven't looked at yet, and that one has been rebagged, and it is our J sprue, which is going to be a King Tiger sprue, as you could possibly see, and it is slightly smaller. It is about 14 and a half inches by nine inches again, so. It's not bad. Um, here's some more of the torsion bar hydraulic lines. Some different the on the steering lever here, the little click system with the gears. That's very well detailed. Uh, we need various pieces from here, like J33. If I can just point those out really quick. Yeah, like these pieces here. I don't have my pointer. Um, just various pieces, smaller pieces on this, but nice texture detail on that if you can see that. There. Radios, radios look good. Wish there was photo etch boxes for the radios, but there's not. So, and then there's the back, ejector pins, you know, there might be some gaps and stuff, but we'll, we'll see what happens when we get there. So that's those sprues, that's the new sprues. Remember every video where I start cutting parts off a new sprue, I I bring it to you. And again, the, the mat's back with basically the parts I need so I can just clip and go. So I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna get all these parts clipped out and then we're gonna get some stuff glued up. So back shortly. Hey guys, just wanna pop back in real quick here before we move on. Um, on this section here, these little frame pieces, I showed you the ones that were on the F sprue. That's incorrect. They are the King Tiger sprues. I needed to show you the ones on JD, the JD sprue, which is a Yag Tiger sprue. And um, as you can see here, this is what they look like. And you can see the detail on those. But I want to show you a comparison between the two. And mold quality and how let's see if I can do this here there's the two parts right there and you can see how the bottom one is crisper in the molding process because it's a relatively newer mold the detail is sharper around the the, the grease points here than on this King Tiger sprue. And that just proves that the King Tiger sprue is either older or it was used a lot more before they made the parts for this um, Yag Tiger. So Zen, I used the Professional Zeron 
clippers for clipping these parts out. I'm just going to show you on this one here. There's a lot of sprue gates. And these are professional clippers. Just chew through the sprue like nobody's business. I mean, whether it's thick or then cut right through that and it, and it just I mean I can come in here and I can cut you know that big old round piece and I don't have any any kind of strain on my hand I'm not worried about the clippers you know with my Tamiya cutters I would never cut something that thick and some of these sprue gates are, are, are thick and you gotta be careful now you see this is a flimsy piece so be careful uh, with these guys that you don't break them now this is number one so I'm gonna put it right there so I'll be back when I have the rest cut out and cleaned up. Hey guys, just popping back in to talk about um, to burn some of this stuff. Um, on these um, torsion bars, they have a nice seam line down the middle um, and they have five connection points. You can come in with a sanding stick and you, know, you can knock that line down pretty easy like this. Just take it down like this. A little bit on that and then come in here there's a lot of these there is a lot of these 18 of them so I have all these left to do I have this stack done I have all these left to do and then you have you know 18 of these come in here and get this in here like this that line off come back in here get that line off there like that same on this side come a little this side here See, there's a line there that was a little hard to get off so I'm gonna come in here with my with my jewelry burr my variable speed foot pedal clean it off and I can just come in here and take that line right out and also if I need if I wanted to I could come in here just like that. So we gotta grab the next one. So you got different options of ways to take these lines off. Um, do a combination of both. Whatever works for you, but it's a there's a lot to do. I mean, like I said, there's 18 of these torsion bars that have a line going down all of them. And then there's 18 suspension arms that have a line going down on one side. Plus all the sprue nibs, there's like six points on each um, on each um, suspension arm. There's six points on each one of these that need to be cleaned up. And you can, like I said, you can you know, make sure you keep your, your tool clean. You can come in here and clean these up with one of these tools if you so choose. Said so you gotta you gotta get this off because there's a little bit of mist mold on some of this, and that's what that line is.
do a little bit right there that I missed on this one that I didn't even see. So I have my Optivisor on. I just realized that most of that probably wasn't on shot, so I'll do another one. But see, there's a little there's a little line right there. Rest your hands on the table. Clean off the nib. And this runs so much truer and with the variable speed. You, know, you take your foot off the pedal, slow it down, you know, speed it up. It's got the different tips. And things like that. So it's a, getting a little cracks like that. I mean, most people, they use a Dremel, and a Dremel is nice. But, you know, if you, if you don't have a Dremel, I mean... You can get in with one of these at about the same price point as you can get it with a Dremel with a flex shaft and a um, and a, um, foot pedal. So, and, you know, you have a little bit more control with this item right here. We'll do this last one here. Show you what I'm talking about. And a little bit of scratches that this puts in there, that'll come out with the with the surface primer, Mr. Surfacer. I um, I've primed stuff I've used this on, and you can't even tell the marks are there. It comes out nice and smooth. I mean, now if you gouge it and stuff, you're gonna have to fix it. But I I don't mind sanding things by hand. I have never had a I've never had a problem with it, but with all these parts and as much lines that are on this Yag Tiger, it it becomes paramount to find a quicker way to do these things. But um, I'm gonna come back again, and we're gonna gonna get a lot done in this episode. I'm gonna have hopefully all this cleaned up, and we're gonna start some assembly. I'll be back. Okay, it is building time now, so. Bring over the instructions. Hopefully that can be seen. And we're going to start with this section here. And we're going to put these J33s. Do a test fit. There's a lot of play in those. We're going to go ahead and use it to me a quick set. So it sets up, sets up pretty quick. flow in there. As you can see there is a lot of play in this. So you want to make sure that they're lined up. Lined up there. From behind. And then now we have this other one which goes on the same way. Uh, follows the pattern of the part. A little bit of glue from behind. The joints here, and then we will do the same thing and make sure it's squared and lined up nice and neat. And now we need this piece here, we'll go in here. This appears to be some kind of pedal. Again, tons of play in this piece. Get it glued and then we'll line it up straight. Straight, I don't have the best eye for seeing things straight. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to put in these cross sections. So we're going to orient this this way. And we're going to put in JD11 here. Alright, 
So I want to put in this front one. I'm going to set it in there like so. square on these in a minute. And then we're going to glue it up a lot better. Okay, so let's make sure that these are square. tweezers push that down like that check this one right oh, can't do any of those so check it up here again so now that this is in in this corner I'm going to fix this brace here just like so up there this brace here this brace there this brace make sure they're all fixed in place a lot of play of these we're just going to follow this down so this uses this kit a lot of glue pieces and I'm actually going to switch this is weld on at number three it's also a very good plastic glue and it's cheaper and it comes in a bigger bulk container uh, I believe I talked about it in my update Monday video are seeing all this I know this is a little tedious and I don't know how many of you want to see me glue this but I'm in it now it is being done so And this stuff, you know, this stuff is pretty quick setting. It's more like to me an extra thin than to me a quick set. They supposedly make a faster setting stuff, but this is their very fast setting, and then they make a slower setting stuff. But you know, this stuff seems to bond as well as you know any other plastic. I tell you, it does work good on GW plastic, especially the Chinese GW stuff. That stuff it works great on. 
get all these supports in now. This is where I finally glue them in now that they're all lined up. All glued in. And like I said, I get the weld on three, it comes in a I don't know, a four or five ounce jar and I decant it into an old extra thin bottle. In this case it's a quick set bottle that I've used up. And this stuff is water thin so I think it's a little thinner than water. It does flow, it doesn't seem to have surface tension. lot of glue on these guys so be prepared to have an alternative glue or be prepared to use a lot of extra thin or whatever your glue of choice is because you're gonna need a lot of it okay now that that's bonded in we're gonna add this section in here which is gonna be yeah, I knew it was going to be a tight fit. Yep, see, this section should have definitely been added in before the sides were glued on. Yep, that broke right off of there. Yep. Okay, well that's going to have to be fixed. soften that up and allow it to loosen it up and allow it to move so I can get this in. See this definitely should have been put in before the sides were glued. So this is a, if you build this kit in the future, uh, this is recommended you do this to put this piece in before you glue, um, like before you glue the sides in. Put the sides in but don't glue this top section and um yeah put put this in because it doesn't want to go in now yeah you get to all see this on live camera wrestling and manhandling this in well, that seemed to work. So, loosening it up with the weld on glue, which is one of the reasons I got the weld on glue, seemed to have helped it. Seemed to have helped it um, slide in there. I did knock off this section, so that'll have to be glued back on, but I'm just going to get this glued in now. Like so. So yeah, don't glue this front half until this piece is in. And that will kind of brace it. Yeah, I saw that in the section of the instructions. And I'm like, no, I think we'll be alright. And I was incorrect. Yeah, that was, that was a mistake on my part. But it's in now. You guys got to see me wrestle with it. So... Um, with that error and issue, I'm going to, um, this video is already going to be pretty long, so I'm going to hold off on the rest of this, and we'll, we'll finish up the rest of this in the next episode, and we'll cover some of the painting in that episode also. So I'll just add a little bit to the next episode of painting. That's going to do it for these video, for this video, uh, for Crazy Gamer Models, I am the Crazy Gamer. You guys have a fantastic day.